So behind me here is a small creek where I've been on holiday for a little while. Not actually in the creek, that would be silly. But I'm out here looking for some little shots for some narrative ghost stories I've been thinking about and um, stuff to post on Instagram. So we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully we'll find some stuff that's suitably spooky and good and I need to learn to look at the lens. I'm a little further away from the river, so we'll see. Uh, we'll see where this this takes us. It's quite an eerie place. Looks like this trail goes somewhere up here. I think. Oh, that's obvious. Oh, looks like it's another path. I think. Hold on. So yeah, we came up from the riverbed down there, and uh, up here onto this path. There's a big embankment like up here and there's some cool stuff going on. I don't know if you can see that but there is hold on let me see if I can brighten this up. Do you see that? Some like iron girders that have been left and there seems to have been a lot of construction in this creek at some point. A lot of things lying about that have been forgotten. Let me just get out of this sun for a second. There seems to be... Sounds like there's someone else in the path. I just heard a, heard a voice. It's a voice up here. Um, you probably get a lot of hikers up here and exploring the area. I mean, it seems like quite a picturesque place but it is also I mean it is a little bit eerie it is a little bit eerie I will give it that which is good good for us because that's what we like don't we we like spooky things but it's, it feels quite isolated because we're sort of walking off into the hills now and this this um, creek I keep calling it a creek maybe it's a gorge I don't know what you call it it's not a valley but it's, uh, it's it's really deep the cliffs go right up let me let me turn this round so that you can see So I don't know if you can see right up over there, that's how high up the the creek or the gorge. Let's let's stick with one of them. Uh where the creek goes up. So we're we're really deep down. <laughs> yeah. People people walking through the woods, so there are people here. So that must have been what, what that, what those voices were, maybe. And man was talking to his dog. I talk to myself sometimes. Maybe I'm talking to myself right now. So I read a little bit about the local uh, sort of folklore about this area. Oh look, there's a little butterfly. Hello butterfly. A little bit about the, the folklore in this area. So this creek uh, was used one time as a quarry uh, by a man's company named uh, Thomas McGlynn and Thomas McGlynn, believe it or not, disappeared in this very same quarry or so they think. All they found that was left of him was a shoe. Apparently he'd had a, a big bust up with his wife and just walked out the house. Rumours are that was, she was going to leave him and when he didn't return that night, uh, people started looking for him in the local area and all they found was one of his shoes on the edge of the quarry. We're getting quite high up here. As you can see down there. Yeah, quite high up. It's like there's some waterfalls and some rapids in the the rivers as we in the river as we ascend. Another piece of interest in folklore in this area is the story of Jack and Gregory Paisley. Jack and Gregory Paisley came here in 1910 and they bought a piece of farmland that was up on the hill just over on this side of the gorge. And Jack and Gregory had a 
had their farm going for a little while, everything was fine. But they were looking for a good water source and they would often take water from down here in the stream and river that runs through this gorge, take it up uh, back to uh, their farmhouse. And, you know, this is before they had indoor plumbing or anything like that up here. So what they did is they decided to build a staircase. And they built a staircase that, uh, not necessarily a staircase, but a set of steps, a set of stone steps that would come down into the gorge and that would allow them to go up and down to collect the water. However, Jack and Gregory Paisley disappeared. No one ever found them. It's a little bit like the Mary Celeste story when their uh, cottage was visited by people concerned about their whereabouts. They found that a, a meal had been set and never eaten two meals for both of them. And the story goes that the ancient Picts that lived in this area believed that this gorge was protected by some sort of unearthly creature or entity and that it didn't take kindly to Jack and Gregory taking the water from the stream and the river so they not only vanquished them but they also made the steps, the stairs disappear so no one ever found them again that's the story so that they, no one could ever come back down here and take what wasn't theirs we have found a bridge. Let's see. Oh, that feels. No, I'm sorry, it looks like old railway sleepers. Bit of an angle. Starting to climb up a bit again. I'm probably going to come out of this at some point soon I'd imagine because we're on the track now for, for quite some time what is that? did you hear that? there must be a path on the other side of the ridge I can hear people it's the voices sort of echo around here anyway, um, check this out Hold on, let me see if I can boost the ISO in this. Try not to fall backwards. I've noticed this, there have been kind of pieces of construction, like I said. And you can see here, you can see here, there are these old moss covered bricks. See if I can get closer. Uh, oh, stepped off the path, never do that. You can see up here there's there's all these this brickwork. If you look down here look, you can see if I take the moss off. See the brickwork? It sort of digs down into the ground a little bit. I've no idea what that is. So there were other interesting parts about the local folklore that I found while I was researching this this area. Uh, the reason I knew there were some spooky goings on around here um, was because when I was a kid. There was a series of books called the Spine Chiller series. They were, they were, I think they were locally produced, probably self-published, really, or small print. But I remember my dad managed to get me a couple of them, really thin, thin booklets that that had little bits of local folklore from different areas around the British Isles. And there was a story about this place just uh, nearly tripped up there <laughs> just outside of Weems Bay and so and that story was about a, a farmer um, who married a, a woman named, Ag named Agnes 
and the farmer disappeared one night, just the same as Thomas McGlynn did. He disappeared out looking for some of his sheep that had wandered um, away and he never came back, at least not initially. So the story goes, wow, look at this up here. That looks dangerous. <laughs> The story goes that the farmer vanished and Agnes remarried. And this was in the 1700s. So that was really a time when you didn't really do that sort of thing. It was frowned upon. Agnes, one year to the night of her wedding anniversary, was found bludgeoned to death in her little cottage up in the hills. And her new husband was gone too. So people assumed that the new husband had got into a fit of rage and murdered Agnes and disappeared, ran off. There, I don't know if there's any record of what happened to him, but his uh, the stories in the local area started to focus on the idea that Agnes's husband had come back. Uh, as a as a vengeful spirit from the wilderness somewhere to enact his revenge. Not too sure about all that. Um, don't know if it actually happened, but it was in that Spine Chiller book and it always stayed with me. And so I knew we were holidaying here. I wanted to check it out and it led me down a rabbit hole, found out about Thomas McGlynn's disappearance and three other people that have disappeared here over the last 150 years. So, when you find out there's a place that seems to be swallowing people up, you want to go and investigate, don't you? Well, at least I do. It just seems to go on and on. Probably should get back soon. Should have said my family are waiting for me. Back at the lodge. Managed to get a couple of hours. There's more of that. More of that stonework. I don't, can you see in here? Hold on, I'll boost the brightness again. I don't know if you can see, hold on. See, can you see all that? Those are massive, massive bricks. All covered in moss, all forgotten. I wonder if, uh, I don't think it's all a wall. It doesn't all look like a wall to me. There is somewhere else I'm trying to find. Um, other than the point where Thomas McGlynn may have last been, well, where his shoe was found. Um, it's back down into the river, so I'm going to come off the path and uh, see if I can find it, because there's an interesting little, little piece of folklore there as well. I'm actually really pleased. I was going to give up. I hope you can hear me over the sound of the, the um, I want to say river, Babylon Brook uh, behind me. So um, I'm really pleased that we found this because I didn't. I, I wasn't sure because the the um, woman back at the the holiday park she marked it on a map for me and she wasn't quite exactly sure but she used to come down here when she was a little girl because I was talking to her about local uh, ghost stories and the sorts of things that I do on my podcast talking till dawn everyone um, with Martin Yates um, so I wanted to check that out but look. Here we are. Let's take a look. You see behind me. <laughs> I'm still getting used to this. Hold on, I'll change camera. See if I can get further down without falling in. So this, this little place, right here, has significance for 
a few people locally, at least the story that I managed to get off of, it was an old forum actually from about 2002, um, I did a search for, for stories in this area, and um, so I found a tidbit about it, and then the, the lady back at the holiday park sort of filled me in and told me the rest. So here is, oh, the camera's doing something funny, hold on. This here is Tamney's pool. So Tamney, strange name as it is, sorry to anyone who's called Tamney, um, was a local girl who apparently drowned in this pool. So the story goes that she lived in a, a nearby village and people had started noticing that she was leaving the village regularly and she was walking up into the hills and she was finding this, this gorge and she was walking through it. People didn't know where she was going exactly, didn't know exactly what she was doing. And so her family who were concerned about her, I think she was a, she was about 11 or 12 years old at the time, you know, back, this is, we're talking back in the 1800s, so kids were allowed to, to roam free, but they started to become concerned about her because she started to show signs of, of being almost in a trance-like state. She, she just, she wasn't herself, she just seemed, the bright spark that had always been there in her seemed to have been gone. Anyway, she kept going, leaving the village and going somewhere. And so her family finally followed her one day and they found her here, coming to this little place. And the story is that she used to stand little rocks up on top of each other, like this, into a little pillar. Strange little pillars that she would make. And no one really knows what the significance of that was, but she had covered this area, all the rocks, um, in those in those stones and when she was asked about it she, she got really angry that people had followed her out here but stories started to to uh, make the rounds around the village that she was you know she was a witch that she was in cohorts with something in the woods uh, that people didn't really understand and sadly Tanley was found drowned in this pool not long after um, and the stories are that she had some uh, runic sort of symbols cut into her arm. Uh, but whether she'd done that herself or not, I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure. It's a strange little pool. I don't know if you can really see right down there. It's deeper than I thought. And you've got this sort of overhanging rock. Is that, I don't think that's, that can't be a cave over there. I swear to God, I didn't touch this, I didn't do it, it's nothing to do with me. You know, I found out that story, got most of it from, uh, well, a little tidbit of it from a local forum in the lady at the holiday park. And, uh, yeah, so the story about Tamney making little pillars out of rocks, no one really knowing what they meant. Well, check this out. So again, I swear I did not do this. Now, apologies, I'm still getting used to using this camera and this gimbal thing that I'm using. Let me zoom in a little bit. Can you see that? That, just like we were talking about those stones being piled up by Tam, the girl that supposedly drowned here. And here we have three stones, one sort of long one and two on top of each other. And they're really strangely balanced. So I don't really know what to make of that. Uh, very strange. Pretty creepy. Probably someone who knows the story. Maybe it was the lady at the holiday park. I send people down there. Then I put rocks all about. Just to scare them. Bit eerie. So yeah, I don't really know what to make about that. It's a strange, strange thing. Those... Uh, rocks. Who knows? Maybe it was Tammy herself. <laughs> but uh, we better move on because I'm going to have to head back soon. And I still want to find this place where Thomas McGlynn supposedly vanished. At least the quarry itself. 
back up on the path, keep going. I'm going to give it another 30 minutes or so and uh, we'll move along, see if we can find, find this place. Is this part of the old quarry? No, no, look, look, look. There's bricks, there's bricks up there. See if I can zoom in on that. Uh, look. Oh. I don't know if I can get that in focus. No, I don't think so. It's got more and more blood there than Michael. There's this here. Look at all of this. That's definitely, that, that's man-made. That's like a wall or part of a building. Or, it's almost as if the, the, the natural rock has subsumed the, the built piece of... Yeah, there's, there's something up there. There's definitely something up there. I can see bits of it now. Yeah, I can see a lot of um, like old masonry. Ooh. Another pool. Looks like what's this? This looks like a an old telegram pole, tele uh, telephone pole. Yeah, look, it's a power line or something. There's the metal on it. There's pipes here as well. They look modern, they look plastic. I wonder what else has been up here. That's a few things now where I've I've sort of found bits of, oh, next step of the stream, hold on. I found bits of old, it's almost like pieces of old buildings. And I don't know why they would be inside this sort of gorge. It's like, it's a strange place to put them. And I would have said it was a wall but there's loads of masonry up there. Big chunks of it. It's as if there were loads of buildings in this, this, this gods and they're all gone. Now where are these old roots and this tree come? Ha, huh, look at that. That almost looks like a crucifix the way that. Starting to see things now. So if you look along here, it comes to this wall and it looks here as if at one time oh man I'm stuck in the mud Ugh. hold on it looks like at one time this was a path for all of the stones here so this led up to something but that means that all of this growth all these trees are way older than what was here Came in here and look what I found. So I saw something. Oh, someone's camped here. Yeah. Why well, they would leave their tent, but there you go. What is that over there? Look at that, that tree. Ooh, a tree, my audience says. Let's see. It's all broken away. And this cliff side looks, I'll bump the brightness a bit. This cliff side looks pretty epic. But it's, it looks a bit like that other rock, so I mean, maybe that is just, just natural, naturally occurring. 
Oh, look. Look what we found here. A warning. Danger. Unguarded edge. No shit. Children must be supervised at all times by a responsible adult. Oh, but I'm responsible. And I'm a child. To be honest, I think I may have to call it a day. Things are getting... Things are getting... The day's getting on a bit. And uh, I'm starting to get a little bit... A little bit claustrophobic. This is just... This gorge has just ran for forever. And it feels like we're rising, but the cliffs on either side are rising as well. I'm going to turn back in 10 minutes if I don't find anything. I'm a little, uh, I'm a little unnerved. I keep, I keep hearing something. It's kind of, whoa, that's bright. I keep hearing something, I'm not sure if it's the back of me or in front. Um, yeah, I'm definitely hearing something now. Um, it sounds like it's getting a little bit closer. Um, I'm not sure, I'm not sure which, uh, it's just a little bit unnerving that it sounded like it sounded like like several people, you know, like like a few people. It didn't sound like one one or two. It sounded like a lot of people. But I don't know. I don't know where else where that would be coming from. I don't know if I what was what was that? So I, I've kept hearing those noises, they sound, it sounds like people, but it sounds like, like a lot of people, like quite a few, and I don't know, I don't know where it's coming from, up ahead or behind, but the thing doesn't make sense as I decided, I decided to turn back a few, a few minutes ago, and uh, it doesn't make sense because this bridge is here. And this bridge was not here before. And I know that sounds crazy, but it wasn't here. It was not here. So I must have somehow got turned round on the path, so I'm gonna have to have to turn back. I'm starting to get a little bit a little bit creeped out. Um, I'm definitely, definitely hearing, hearing voices and things. I don't know if the camera's picking it up. I hope it is, because I'd love to get back and listen to it, but... I, I just saw someone, uh, I just saw someone up there. I thought I did, but there's, there's no one. I think I'm just getting paranoid now. Like, as much as I love the outdoors, I can sort of freak myself out a little bit. So I'm, I'm gonna I'm walk down here. And the, I must have got turned around somehow. Maybe when I maybe when I was down at um, Tamney's pool, maybe, maybe that's, maybe that's where. I get turned round, maybe I came up onto the wrong path or something. But th there's, there's really, as far as I can tell, there's only, there's only one path. But, eh. Uh, no. There is. There is someone. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, I'm definitely, definitely hearing things, and I keep. As I'm coming along here, I keep thinking I. 
keep thinking I see someone just stepping off off the path. Like it's just out of sight, just out of sight. Every time I, I, I take my eye just off the path for a second, I'm just, I think I'm, I'm just freaking myself out. There's the, is that noise again? I'm definitely on the right way because the, the river's on my left hand side now, so I'm, I'm definitely heading back. I must be. But I was sure that when I was heading up, it was. Oh, I don't know. I can, I can just hear. I'm gone then. Someone just walked straight off the path. 100% saw them. Wasn't filming. Of course that would happen. Hello? Hello? I don't, I don't know why they would walk off the path and just stand over there by that tree. Hold on, see if I can get them or not. Hello? Hello? There's someone standing over there. It's they're not, they're not moving, they're just standing next to the tree and this is, I think this is the only way I can go to get out. I should go back, but I don't know why they're not answering me. Hello? I can see you. Wearing old, it's like old farm clothes or something, or 